Trev and I am the Geekologist and Geekology Apart. I'm here to talk to you about a DAC from SMSL and I will be presenting the show but you will be the star of the show. Yes, you the viewer can be a reviewer as well. If you know my shows, you know what the rest of this is all about. If you don't, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about the SMSL DO300. We're going to then put it through a test where I listen to it through a set of headphones and we're going to record the results and you can make your own mind up as to whether you like this or another member of the SMSL family. Let's get on with the unboxing. A plain white Chinese box, but quite heavy for SMSL. The same all the way round. Let's tug the cardboard outer off and show you what's inside. First of all, the usual warranty card with a QR code that you use your camera to scan and then it will bring you up a website and you can get your warranty on it. Next, an or another member of the SMSL family. Let's get on with the unboxing. A plain white Chinese box, but quite heavy for SMSL. The same all the way round. Let's tug the cardboard outer off and show you what's inside. First of all, the usual warranty card with a QR code that you use your camera to scan and then it will bring you up a website and you can get your warranty on it. Next, an instruction manual which gives you an idea as to what this premium DAC chip offers because all DAC chips have various functions and the ESS has a fairly unique set of functions. This is powerful enough to need a proper mains cable so the power supply is pretty good for an off-the-shelf DAC. Standard USB cable USB A to USB B. Yes, you can run it from afar with a remote control. Ladies and gents, my SMSL buddies, aoshidaaudio.com, link above and in the YouTube description, have supplied me with the DO300, featuring the ES9039MS Pro flagship DAC chip by the American company ESS. This is in no mood to pull any punches when it comes to sound quality. And this represents the most expensive DAC that I have currently in my possession from SMSL. And we're gonna go downstairs later and show you just how many there are now down there in that little family I have. And we'll compare one against the other. A little bit more heft to it than their other models but the tempered glass and the push function volume knob is typical of their other gear. We give it a spin and we can have a look at the back. Gold plated inputs and outputs. We have AES balanced in and balanced outputs as well as unbalanced outputs. We have optical, USB, coaxial, HDMI and Bluetooth wireless inputs. The supplied Bluetooth area alone is a piece of cake. 
as you can see you just twist it get it reasonably tight and twist the arrow into position and that is all there is to it what's inside the box well i'm not going to unscrew it for you but i can tell you that apart from the flagship dac chip of which there's just a single dac chip you have 11 op amps for the analog output stage the analog output stage is of course what we can hear without the analog output stage all we get is a series of bells and whistles or if we hooked it up to some sort of screen we'd see a load of zeros and ones whizzing past us so the analog output stage is extremely important when it comes to a DAC this is what differentiates the sound that you get from your smartphone which has a DAC chip in it to something like this it's just that your smartphone is x amount of size on the circuit board and this one has a much bigger circuit board of course and a much bigger analog output and digital input interface inside it the sort of extras you'll get on this compared to other DAC chips is you'll get support for higher transmission rate in the digital inputs. Most of the DACs out there have got pretty decent levels for if you're using USB. While we're here, without going overly technical, I wanted to talk to you about what is a DAC, why do you need a DAC, and why do you need to spend this much money on a DAC? A DAC is a digital to analog converter. Almost always that is abbreviated into the words DAC. When music is recorded nowadays, it is put onto a hard drive. It's recorded obviously using analog equipment, but that analog equipment is then fed into a digital interface called an analog to digital converter. The music is stored as a series of code on hard disks, probably a lot more than one, because obviously if one goes wrong, then you've lost all that information. And so there's always a backup. By storing it on a hard drive and recording it in digital format, it won't degrade in the way that a normal master recording made on master tape will degrade because the master tape is made of magnetized tape and over years no matter how well it's stored it will degrade not so for a digital recording that is one of the benefits of digital recording another benefit is the dynamics capable in a digital recording are far higher than the dynamics capable of being captured in an analog recording. The analog process goes into digital and it is stored on a hard disk. That information we will call now code. Just the same as Morse code, you need to be able to decode it. As I've said, using an analog to digital converter, the recording has been stored onto a hard drive. The code is a series of zeros and ones, and the way in which it's decoded is by using a digital to analog converter to convert it back to what it started at. The digital to analog converter decodes that code. The zeros and ones become sounds that you and I can hear, which is analog. The code that it's stored in, zeros and ones, is digital. A digital to analog converter is needed for any audio listening of any digital device. A master recording done on digital can, of course, be put onto an analog source, such as a cassette tape or a vinyl record and that does not need a DAC. What needs a DAC is when you're either streaming something or you're downloading something or you're listening to something on a CD. Having said that your smartphone has a DAC chip in it, your portable CD player has a DAC chip built into it and it also has output stages and possibly even an amplifier, why on earth would you need 
anything more. Given that digital is supposedly the perfect format, wouldn't any DAC chip do to be able to decode that information? After all, the music is stored in an almost perfectly preserved format. The distortion levels should be pretty much inaudible. So why improve on the DAC that you've already got? There are several reasons why you might want to get a better DAC than is stored in your smartphone or installed on your CD player or your streamer. Think about it this way. You have a $500 smartphone and it has a DAC chip in it. It also has a camera in it. You can also surf the net on it. You can also take video with it. How much money and time and research has been spent on getting the DAC chip? How important is it to the manufacturer and to most of the consumers that that DAC chip produces perfect sound quality? And is there even such a thing as perfect sound quality? CD player, how important is it to get the transport part of the CD mechanism right? How much money would you want spent on that side of it to be right, as opposed to the DAC part of it? As you can see, where the money goes is the important part in electronic products. What I'm trying to demonstrate here is that when we're looking at digital components, the DAC part is not necessarily the most important part for manufacturers. A market has been created and is full of products like the SMSL. All of the money has been spent on the DAC. That's all this is, is a DAC. It's a DAC with quite a few features compared to a normal DAC. And then you can add this to the amplifier of your choice. You may well have come from having a vinyl setup that is absolutely incredible and will stand the test of time. And you've got a really decent amplifier. And then suddenly you realize that you've fallen behind a little bit and you want to hear what CDs, SACDs, digital downloads and streaming, what the fuss is all about with them. How much storage there is on streaming compared to how many records you could possibly store in your house. It's not difficult to see where the attraction to the hi-fi buff for digital sources comes from. The streaming platforms give you an opportunity to listen to music you would never have heard before. Plug that into your existing analog system, which you've always used hitherto for listening to your records and you have an instant high quality sounding device that only needs to be plugged into your computer or your laptop or your smartphone even. I would suggest that something of this quality would outperform many of the analog devices out there. We're going to go downstairs very soon. I'm going to put the DO300 through its paces. We're going to demo it against the C200, the DO100, and the DO200 Mark II, all by SMSL. I say the word we with great accuracy because you and I are going to be going downstairs and we're going to listen collectively to the next part of this YouTube review. Well, how am I going to do that? By using a set of Roland binaural in-ear earphone and microphones plugged into an Olympus LS11 linear PCM recorder. And in stunning stereo, you will hear a series of recordings that I make using this. You will be able to hear the music that I have used used to demo the SMSL DO300. You can listen to it over and over again. And if you feel that the YouTube compression is too much and will alter the sound quality of the recording, do not worry. In the YouTube description, as always, I have WAV files stored and available for you to download freely with no subscription required. After the recording's finished, we'll come back and have a little chat about the DO300 against its brothers in the SMSL family. For any recording, you need a set of speakers. And these are the speakers that I'll be listening through today. This is the stealth magnet version of the legendary HE1000 planar headphones made by Hi-Fi Man. They retail at $2,000 and they are less than a week old. They've not had the YouTube video treatment yet. These will be plugged into a rather special hybrid amp called the Hi-Fi Man EF1000. The Hi-Fi Man EF1000 retails in this country at 12,700 
and £49. It is a headphone amplifier and it is a no compromise headphone amplifier as well as being a extremely powerful speaker amplifier. I will put these on my head and record the results. We'll come back and we'll discuss the DO300. How does that sound? I'll see you in two minutes. Having just been introduced to my SMSL family where you listen to the DO200 Mark II, the DO100, the C200 and then finally this DO300, what did you think? This is my opinion. If you haven't had a chance to have a proper listen, turn away, go back and listen again. If you had had a chance to listen, well here goes. I love the DO300. My second choice, believe it or not, was the DO100. There was just something about the DO100 that was captivating. It just was very punchy, but the DO300 has punch, poise, and everything you could ever want in a mid-price DAC, because believe you me, there are far more expensive DACs out there. SMSL make great DACs. That's why I think Aoshida Audio seem to send me DAC after DAC from them because they know they're going to be very popular for the price level. I wasn't disappointed at all in the DO300. I felt it just had a little bit more finesse than its brothers, which were slightly cheaper, all of which have something to offer at their price level. But the DO300 I think is definitely worth having a look at. You listen to a DSD track of more than this, from Up by Peter Gabriel, an extremely rare high-res recording that's no longer for sale, and copies of that SACD, of which that was taken from, will fetch an awful lot of money. You've had a chance to listen to it through some world-class headphones, the HE1000 version, three Stealth Magnet editions, and uh, one of the best headphone amplifiers ever made, the EF1000 by Hi-Fi Man. It was brought to you using pro recording equipment. You have a listen, you have your say, give me your conclusions. You know where to write to, you know where to like. The more subscribers, the merrier. And until the next time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.